afternoon and welcome to Have a Chat, filmed live here at Rogers Studio in Miramichi, New Brunswick. I'm Judy Loger and I'm alone today because of my other guests being away. Uh, Audrey is a co-host and Veronique, as you know, they both had obligations. So I'm not actually alone. I did <laughs> escort this lovely young lady on set to be a co-host. She's foremost a friend. And she's here today to talk about her role with um, her mental health work as a clinical therapist. Yes. I want to welcome to the set the lovely Michelle Bushy Joe. Thank you, Judy. I'm Michelle, very happy to be here. Thanks for hopping in at the last minute. The girls had to be away. So I guess what I meant is I usually take your seat because I like to be in the role of just sitting back and entertaining our guests <laughs> and let them do the hosting or moderating. But it's me and you today. Great. So welcome to this Monday. Thank you. We always do on our show talk about something that is a little bit uplifting, thought provoking or positive, something to reflect upon. So it was me today to come up with the quote and I know how your brain works and that you'll jump <laughs> in to uh, give me some feedback on, on what you feel about it. Okay. The quote is by John Lennon, when you do something beautiful and nobody noticed, do not be sad for the sun every morning is a beautiful spectacle and yet most of the audience still sleeps. Your thoughts? Well my thoughts on this immediately goes to uh, you know we come from a community that has uh, a lot of compassion and a very resilient community. Uh, there are a lot of people who really live by this quote. You know a lot of people who are doing a lot of things behind the scenes mm -hmm. uh, who are doing things not to be affirmed not necessarily need the affirmation of that uh, they do it because they care mm -hmm. and they do it because uh, it's necessary it feels right you right. know it's just uh, for example if you're seeing somebody that's less fortunate on the sidewalk and they they're in need for money homeless for example if you slip them a 20, which you and I probably have done, mm -hmm. you don't tell anybody about it. You no. just know that you've bettered their day in some little way and that's not going to break you to give them five or ten for, you know, throughout the year or throughout the week. I, I think, you know, a lot of us live by the virtue of, you know, pay it forward. Mm -hmm. I do. You know, and uh, you, know, you, you don't do it for really any other reason than the fact that, you know, your soul wants to Feels good. feel good. But also, you want other people to feel good. I know. Right? And a lot of times, it makes us happy to make other people happy. Well, it makes and me. And that's enough. That's how I feel. Totally. That's how I feel, too. Uh, now, so this is the first clear day that we've had in this, what would you would call, straight out, <laughs> right on winter weather. In fact, I went to pack up my winter clothes, and I thought, I can't do that. I need my warm sweaters and my coats and even my boots some days. That's right. But I hope that the worst is behind us, except for the horrendous situation that's been happening throughout Canada and really heavily hitting uh, the flood areas or hitting Quebec, Ontario, and our own province of New right. Brunswick really badly. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the flood situation, which has been just um, ongoing this past week and even before that. Well, we know that they're saying that, uh, you know, it's going to start receding as maybe around Thursday. But uh, when it does start to recede, there's still going to be a lot of impact still remaining. You know, some work will still need to be done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the highways are remaining closed as well. Yes. And so we just want to really reiterate that, you know, that call 511 for highway reports and road closures. It's oh. really important that people do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know there's a lot of fundraising efforts uh, launched in the area to help people out. And last year they did a similar a similar outreach like that. And they raised $1.6 million oh last my. year. Wow, that's incredible. It was pretty incredible and locally. And also they're saying that each household uh, has been evacuated, we're given $300 uh, of emergency cash. Great, good. And there have been almost 500 people who have been given accommodation, as, such you. as hotels. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were saying that over 1,000 people, the staffs are saying 1,096 individuals have registered from health from the Canadian Red Cross. Oh my. So thank yeah, goodness for them. Yeah, they've been really, really helpful. And I was taking note of the fact that in, um, Montreal, just west of Montreal, when the big dike broke yes. uh, the other day, uh, they evacuated the first day, I believe, 1,500 people, and then after that had to evacuate 5,000 people that, you know, get in there, get your pets, get the, the most uh, quality things that you own, and get out. That's right. And they were, they were wading in, uh, you know, water up to their waists, and, you know, 
we say, oh, what a crappy day, what a rainy day, but we've not <laughs> experienced that in our own Miramichi City. Thankfully. I mean, we've had it in the winter. We did have some roads that yes. had to be shut down, but very temporary. Or, you know, we're not driving around canoes trying to get ourselves out no, off the streets. No, You know, and as a social worker, I've become very um, aware of the, you know, the impacts of flooding. Not only the obvious impacts, but, you know, also there's uh, all kinds of other effects that take place as well. Share some with us, Michelle. Okay, so of course there's the physical burden, you know, of the damaged property, uh, the vehicles, um, the, sometimes the looting. Mm -hmm, um, also disease will come with that. Yeah, contamination. And People trying to get in that water, which is sewage infected and whatever other contaminants might be in there. Right, so that, that plays a big impact. Mm -hmm. There's also the financial burden. And as some people do have insurance, some people don't have coverage. True. And a lot of people are left without the means to meet their basic needs, mm -hmm. the things that we take for granted. Yeah. Also, there's your emotional effects of anxiety, fear, anger, sadness, grief. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And the long-term effects, which is, you know, loss of life, loss of livestock, loss of your pet. Right. Um, personal hardships that come with this kind of a tragedy. And as well, you know, Atlantic Canada is a big tourist industry. Yes, of course it is. And it impacts our tourist industry. People don't want to go places where they feel that uh, they, you know, the place has been flooded. They're or going to be stranded. They can't get back. I mean, even my friend's... Uh, um, his friend's girlfriend lives over in the Gemseg area and right. she had to stay here because she couldn't get through the impassable road. Right. Um, she had things to get done. So it's just, it's really, that's great that you brought up all that information. Well, it's just important because people have to realize that sometimes after, you know, if you experience a, a tragedy like this, it's trauma. Trauma. And so trauma, you know, you need to seek help. Yes. And there's all kinds, you know, there's that seeking your friends, seeking a professional. Uh, are just being aware of these feelings that you have are normal. And that there are resources and available. And that there are resources available. And thank you to all those that have kicked in the Red Cross, for example, oh. and all of those that are helping those in need um, get through this uh, terrible situation. And hopefully the waters will go down. They are planning to hopefully recede uh, in the next few days. Yes, they're saying by Thursday they're hoping to see a significant difference. Yeah. yeah. So, Michelle, uh, one of the main reasons I brought you on here is that you are a clinical therapist yes. and first of all for anyone who doesn't really know a lot about Michelle Bushy Joe which I do I'm thankful for mm -hmm. tell the viewers a bit about who you are well I grew up here I'm from Miramichi uh, I grew up in Miramichi uh, in the 80s I went to St. Thomas University me too so you're a alumni, alumni. Uh, went there for my undergrad, uh, then I got married and I moved to Halifax. Yes. I took a degree also in early child education and worked in daycare for a lot of years. Okay. Uh, which I loved, but uh, unfortunately you don't make a lot of uh, grounds in you know, money in that no. field, which is an issue that we all need to address in another show, I'm sure. Sure. Um, but I did that, and then um, I went through uh, went through a divorce, and then I went to work for Disney Cruise Lines. All right. I mean, I think they know me on that cruise they line do. now. I really, truly say, <laughs> after all the cruises we've done with our kids over the years, that was the, the main one. Oh, that's nice. And I can't say enough about it. So. No, it's a wonderful place. It is magical. Beautiful. I did that for a year to kind of put myself, my thoughts together, what I want to do. Yeah. I always dreamt of being a social worker. Uh, so I went back to school when I came back from there. I did my, my Bachelor of Social Work degree at Dalhousie University. Yes. I worked in child protection for a year, but my dream was to work at the IWK. The IWK. See, that would be something that I might dream about doing and helping those uh, children get through. Yes. But I know I'm such a, a soft heart yes. that I don't know if I could do what you did. So well, I'm sure you could. Uh, I don't know. Okay. But, uh, you know, I, I went there and I ended up working with uh, the oncology unit, work with children with leukemia. And uh, it was, uh, those children taught me about life and those families taught me about life. I helped them and they taught me. Are we talking about uh, leukemia that is non-treatable because there are some forms of blood right. cancer that is chronic and some that are acute, correct? It was both. 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 Uh, the best call I ever got, the best calls were when I got a page. And they would page me and say, Michelle, come on up. Uh, one of your patients got their uh, dream oh. to go to Disney, Disney Cruise Lines. Oh. Those were my best days. I would run upstairs. For I wouldn't even take the elevator in those days. I would just run upstairs on those days. That was the wish to go. They actually went on a Disney cruise. They did. And I go up. Incredible. And, and, you know, social workers sometimes, you know, people are worried about what does the social worker bring to the table, mm -hmm. you know. And to walk in and say, I worked on Disney. And they would be, ah. Oh, and yeah. those were the greatest days, no, really. One of the finest moments, seeing the those little moments. children's faces lit yeah. up. So you did, you've had a lot of experience then. 
And then tell us uh, currently what your jobs are. You have two roles. You are a clinical therapist, yes. and you work in addictions and mental health services with the child and youth team. Yes. And you also carry out your own private practice. I do. I have a master's degree in social work I'm from Dow as well. Uh, so I do do my own private practice, uh, Michelle Bushy Therapy Services. And I've been doing that for now about three years. I work a couple evenings a week. Uh, I love the work. Um, I love my daytime job as well, and I love my evening job as equally. So going just for a moment to your private practice, tell me who would qualify, who would uh, you see, for example, yeah. that are going through what situations? When would I be able to see you if I was going through a divorce? Sure could. Or an accident and I lost somebody in an accident or any of that? Yes, uh, basically it's, it's a pretty open ground. You know, uh, I specialize in working with uh, women and children who have been uh, victims of uh, physical abuse oh, okay. or emotional abuse. I'm specially trained in that area, but also I, I work with chronic illnesses. I work with mm. youth with uh, addictions. I work with um, youth that have mental health, you know, depression, yes. a lot of anxiety. There's a lot a of A lot this. of that going on. Uh, I do some counseling uh, for, um, you know, couples. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a little selective on that. Mm -hmm. I have to uh, really, that's a, it's all hard work, but that's well, you've been there yourself, right? You I've went been there through myself, it. You yeah. went through it. So, yeah. but you can talk to it from experience is the main for thing sure. too. Yes. Been there and done that. And now, you know, you can help them walk the walk. That's right. This is a really crazy question, but I have <laughs> friends that are, no, seriously, <laughs> there's always one. Um, I have friends that are devoted dog or cat or pet mm -hmm. owners. And I have one friend that almost required therapy when they lost when he lost his dog. I'm, I'm not kidding you. He had to I, take work on. I have clients. I had a, a client who lost two of her dogs around the same time. She got them the same time, yeah. and they both they were 15 years old. Yes. She was devastated. They were like her children. They are like their children, of yeah. course. No, that grief comes in many facets. Exactly. And uh, so um, definitely work with that. Like you said, somebody that may have been in a flood and has lost most everything that they treasured, including a pet perhaps, and all mm -hmm. their lifelong treasures. I mean, right. it's only material, but it's your lifelong memories. If you have an album of your grandparents and et cetera in right. that little box of, of goodies, then it's forever gone. That is that is a loss. That's a big loss. Now. Hearts have been extremely heavy in the area. Uh, Veronique and I uh, chose not to air our show, which again is live. Have a chat uh, each and every Monday and airs throughout the week, uh, provincially. Um, we had a tough time. Uh, my little face clip maybe uh, portrayed me as coming across in a, more of a carefree manner while talking about it. That's my way of holding up. Right. To be more pleasant and more strong as opposed to trying to hold back those tears and, and you know what I'm saying yes I do we, we do handle things in different ways we all do handle things in different ways you know uh, every everyone is different that's what I love most about my private practice that it's always different mm -hmm. and uh, you know um, I people do the work they come and they do the work I, I give them information I, I help guide them when they open that door and leave to go home they're doing the work that's right you give them the guidelines you give them the support that they need to walk out and call that's right and they, and they do it. So then they come back and you'll see what they do and uh, and people do it in different ways. Mm -hmm. We use different th uh, therapeutic strategies. Yes. Um, of course, um, depending on what works best with the individual. You always work on building the relationship in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Very important. To get that rapport going. They can yes. trust you, that they yes. can let their guard down and that it's all, of course, extremely confidential. You're in a business where confidentiality is, is, is top and foremost, exactly. Yeah. But what I was trying to say was that we couldn't carry out our normal show last week due to our emotions over the tragic loss of four of our beautiful young Miramichiers um, yes. in our area that were taken. Um, Easter weekend. So we just did a face clip and posted it out there to lend support to the community as two people that are known in, in the Miramichi right. City. Uh, so we're back today with you, um, I am, to talk more in, about that whole situation. And before we get to that, maybe you could just give us a, a typical day for Michelle Bushy Joe mm -hmm. in your day practice okay. with a critical instances or a crisis situation. You're sitting at your desk, you get a call, walk me there. Well, uh, we do have a special team uh, called the Critical Incident uh, Debriefing Team, and there's a number of us on that have been specially trained by the province, mm -hmm. uh, and is working specifically with first responders uh, and helping them th uh, debrief, and usually within 24 to 72 hours. Uh, so, of course, we had some of those calls, and when we, um, we did that. It, it was a little bit different this time because our team themselves, uh, we had uh, a close friend of ours had lost... Um, a very special person in their life. So 
basically we um, we ourselves were going through that as well. Okay. well it's taking care of each other. Well, that's it. When someone's directly involved and it's your job to help other people, then yes. all of a sudden the roles have reversed and she's the one grieving and going through everything right. as, as a parent naturally would. So then um, you deal directly with the 911 and all of that? Like you come together with... Uh, I, I don't deal directly with them, but if, if they had to be debriefed right. to say, uh, and they needed an opportunity to come and talk about it, uh, they last from two to three hours, I could be a facilitator for that mm -hmm. particular. So we're going to have to go to break, I guess, Michelle, um, the, very shortly. But so before we do, I want you to be able to tell me um, a little bit more about that situation. So when you have nieces and nephews in your own family, uh, and I have children, your role becomes that of a, um, a griever as well. Yes. But you can't let that take over your job because you've got a job to do. Right. How do you do that? Well, it, it, it takes some practice, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, you know, uh, it's very interesting how we do this because it's very uh, natural for if there's a, something going on or there's a trauma or there's a disaster, is for us to fight or flight. So mm -hmm. most of us leave. Exactly. Right, and so what happens is uh, what what takes place is what you learn is that first responders, all of us, we go in. Mm -hmm. And when we go in, uh, that's kind of goes against your grain. For sure. Right? But as you get better, you get better at it as you do it. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we have moments uh, when we have to really practice self-care. Oh, for sure. For sure. But uh, we be, we're skilled in our ability to be able mm -hmm. to be there. I mean, your husband himself is a I physician. Know. So, you know, we, we learn how to do that um, in a caring way. I'm getting really filled up. I think it comes <laughs> from having uh, a lot of sad moments, of course, very hard moments. Uh, over the week, yes. I worked with those children at the school, not in a very intimate way, but in a classroom situation where they were part of the Interact uh, Rotary. Right. It's like a junior Rotary Club in the high school. All right, yes. So I knew them, I knew what the work they were doing, and so I just have to picture them wholeheartedly giving back to the community, and then, then, then all of a sudden, then they're gone, and yeah. it's almost surreal to people. It, it's, they, young people think that they are invincible, that's right. not going to ever happen to me. Do you deal a lot with that, trying to tell children that, how do you deal with the youth part? Well, we know that uh, youth, you know, teenage years are naturally difficult to begin with, right? And we know that, uh, that a, an event like this can sometimes be that youth's first experience of, you know, tragedy and, and, and death. It's a difficult age to begin with. Yeah. So we kind of start there. Yes. Uh, and then basically uh, we help them out the best we can. We have lots of tips that we offer. Uh, we, we certainly uh, provide all the support we can, yes. many different uh, avenues of support, mm -hmm. and uh, we go from there. And do you go right into the schools? Like do you have to go right into the schools? We do. I'm on the child and youth team and we go right into the schools. We're all assigned different schools mm -hmm. and we go in there and... So we're going to go to break, Michelle. Okay. We can't wait to hear more. Welcome back to Have a Chat. Again, I'm Judy Loge. We are here live at Rogers Studio in Miramichi, New Brunswick. And I'm so pleased that today I was able to be joined by Michelle Bushy Joe as a friend, as a co-host, and as an expert in, um, I'm going to say it, in dealing with a lot of various issues in mental health, addictions, she's a clinical therapist, etc. And we've been talking about the tragedy that struck our area and really destroyed um, the lives of so many people around them because we love them dearly and we're mourning um, and we need people like Michelle to kind of help us through this journey and sometimes like I said I have two children um, they're not children they're men but they were children right. and they have lost friends at a young age and as a parent I wasn't trained like you were in teaching them how to cope so could you please share with me and our viewers who are having their teens come home at the end of a day, having lost one of their very special, special friends at school or in their lives, how they grieve and what they, how they grieve and what you can do to help them. Right. So some of the tips that would be very helpful are really normalizing mm -hmm. the, the range of emotions mm -hmm. that uh, youth are going to experience during a time like this. Uh, so validate those emotions and make sure that 
they know you're available to talk. Uh, also is to prepare. They're going to have shifts of emotion. They're going to have times when they want to laugh with their friends and they're going to feel guilty about that. Okay. But that's all appropriate. We need humor. Right. Humor is healing as well, but right? But it takes a while for that humor to come, doesn't it? It, it, I well, mean, I had a friend that lost her daughter tragically at 22, and just to get a smile out of her, I'm telling you, Michelle, it took months before she said, I should be allowed to laugh. Right. And what would she think if I was laughing? That I'm happy and I'm not happy. Right. That and kind of thing. They feel judged, right? Yeah, and you feel wrong doing it. But we have to really express that it's important to do that. You know, my husband is an Aboriginal man from Burn Church, and I always love going to their, they wake their people in the home. Okay. And they tell stories, and they laugh, and they have a celebration. Celebration. It's very different on how we do business. Uh, you know, we go to the funeral solemn parlor. It's very and somber. morbid and very sad. Yes. So I think that a lot of people think they can't be happy during that time, okay. and it's important to be. To remember them, and, and, and some people grieve, like you know, you can right. tell me, people grieve in different ways. Absolutely. And we can't tell people, oh, you should be doing this, or you're doing good, or because they might not be doing well. That's like right. Like we say the wrong things a lot of the time, and I know you'll, you'll get to that, but I find it hard, some, I've learned now over the years just to say nothing at all. The one thing, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that I should say when someone's lost a child is, and truthfully coming from me, you've been an amazing mother. You yes. were an amazing mother, I said to my two friends that lost children. It's because so it's true. Said that. They, they were. They were the best mothers that you could ever expect a child to have. But other than that, we can't say, oh, be strong because, right. you know. Well, there's stages of changes, right? There's seven stages of change. And we know that everyone goes through them at different paces, mm -hmm. right? So we go, but you have to go through them all. And sometimes people want to skip them or think they have to skip them. And if we want to heal properly and we want to be healthy, we have to go through one, you know, I always say the whole alphabet, the A, B, C, Ds, all the way to Z. So with my degree in psychology, I'm going back to the shock, the anger, the denial, right? the bargaining, the, is it grieving and accepting? Well, all right, I have them right here, actually. You have uh, them, it's right been a long while, because I took my degree. <laughs> <laughs> well, the stages of grief, like I said, and sometimes people can sip, skip uh, stages and go back and forth. Oh, right. Right, but, you know, of course, it's a shock and denial. Mm -hmm. It's your pain and guilt, your anger, uh, some, the, sometimes the depression, the reflection, the loneliness. For sure. Uh, then there's an upward turn. Uh, you start to readjust a little bit. Uh, you start to work through things and you become a little bit more functionable again and then the acceptance and hope comes. Mm. But some people can do this at a very quick pace. Some people can take years and years and years to do this. Yes. And it's to be respectful of that and to be respectful of when you're working with, with youth and children and, and adults is to really get a feel of what are your, what's your belief system? How do you believe in doing this? True. And helping them get through that in a non-judgmental way. Mm. It's really important. Uh, to do that and then, you, then you'll see people start to move forward yeah but they can get stuck do you find I've had someone that can, because of my age of course I've seen a lot of people with major losses in their life like children that have uh, been passed on like at, at age six tragically right. um, they say that sometimes that can really either make a couple stronger or mm. break a couple because of either guilt or just dysfunction because they don't know how to bond anymore without that child one so depressed the other person can't get them out of it so do you counsel those couples that have maybe um, had a t child taken tragically just as we've had happen recently of course yes and every single one of them dealt with it differently Okay. You know, in a different capacity, in a mm. different pace, a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it can make you stronger. Sometimes there's other challenges and hurdles that are very difficult to get over. Um, you know, uh, it, it's parents are you know not supposed to outlive their children. Exactly. So it's unnatural. And grandparents that have grandparents. have dealt with these uh, funerals over the week, like my heart went out to those oh, grandparents yes. that in their 80s that have lost not a child but their grandchild, even yes. younger. That's right. Mm. So it, it is uh, it is something that is very sad. But like I said, it, it just really depends on the it depends on the individuals involved. Totally. So you're saying that there are certain things. What are some of the things that we do so that we shouldn't say or do? Like like we shouldn't say. Probably my guess would be, oh, you're so strong. Because right. how do we know they're so strong? They That's might right. be putting on a facade and going about saying, yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm holding up when they're broken and and sheltered and just you know inside coming apart. The key is to listen. Yeah. It's to listen. Uh, and sometimes, you know, as, as a clinical therapist, it's very hard to be quiet and listen <laughs> because you tend to want to, you want to talk and you want to help. 
But the key is when you're going through grief is to really to listen to people, give them an opportunity to talk, to be comfortable in silence if it's required, and let people have an opportunity to really regroup their feelings and be able to express it. And we live in a really fast-paced society, so we kind of really want to do that. What do you feel about this? How do you feel about I that? Know. Help them through with as quickly right. as we can. And we want, it's, it's kind of like, you know, a... Uh, for lack of a better word, like seductive to have a resolution. Like that's what you aim for, right? You're, you're aiming for, we want to get these people to a place where they're feeling better or they're able to cope, yeah. but that process can't be hurried. No. Uh, you know, so we have to be patient with that. And let's just say it, grieving is a forever thing. It's it not is. just a, a year or five years or 20 years. It's that right. the rest of your life has changed. Once someone that you love totally in your life is gone, I've heard people say they think about them every minute of the day, Absolutely. basically. They might not be accurate in saying every right. minute, but they think of them multiple times throughout the day because they just can't handle um, not thinking about them. Now, this is the scene. Uh, the roads that night were very treacherous. I had people tell me that they were coming from, um, you know, Moncton through this route, coming back into Nelson, um, and that... Uh, like the Rogersville Road, right? Wouldn't that be Michelle? Where were they coming from? Well, uh, that is up from Papa Joe's. Yes, but Nelson. When you take that highway, that goes right to Rogersville. Yes, that right. leads to Rogersville. You're okay, right. so that's that area of Nelson, Papa Joe's convenience store, and people were traveling back from Rogersville Road, saying that it was very foggy. Uh, the roads were very dicey because of the amount of water on the road, yes. and um, you know it just can happen. I've hydroplaned my car. And it's the most terrifying feeling in the world. It is, me and, too. And just as misfortune and tragedy would have it, there had to be a bay of water, a pond right there. Right. You know? Um, it's a tragedy. Yes, yeah, absolutely. it is. Yeah. What else can you tell us about things that we should do? Uh, okay, you said that you should just listen, but what if you go into a room and maybe four children who have just lost four of their best friends are sitting around not saying a word. Right. It, it seems odd just to sit there and not do yes, anything. Yes, of course, of course. So what's your opening? What's your way of breaking into that silence to make them come out of their shell a bit? Well, often a, an approach would be is ask them how they're doing, Okay. You know, how they're feeling, uh, if there's anything, any questions that they have. So you encourage them, you encourage them to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say, like, uh, it's not... It's not always beneficial, say, for someone like myself to go in and just start do all the talking. No. So it is still, pro you know, provoking conversation. It's just that basically letting them come up with what they want to talk about. When they're ready. Not what I think they should talk about, mm -hmm. is what they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And let them ask the questions that they want. And when you open that dialogue and they start to trust you, they'll, there's a lot of talking going on. Of course. A lot of talking going on. But you have to let them know that we are interested in hearing what they have to say and uh, we will guide them. Mm -hmm. But it's their experience, not ours. And so once they once they feel that, you will start to have conversation. Just be there until they're ready. Yeah. Now, what else do you have for us? Anything else you want to share that's very important for the viewers? Well, one thing is to acknowledge the impact of the deceased person's absence. Because sometimes uh, people feel well, if we don't talk about it, then it's not going to be a thought that's in the present. They're thinking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's acknowledging that, you know, that um, the person has is deceased, that we're missing their absence, you know, that, and just acknowledging that. Help them finding ways to grieve that's comfortable for them is really the key. And I always say that comes from your belief system, which we develop really early in our lives. Mm -hmm. We develop that before we're five years old. Imagine. Uh, so we really, we try to explore that. Um, we help them find their own answers. And teens, and you and I were talking about this earlier, peer support for teenagers and school-aged children is extremely important. Oh, they bond tight. They bond tight mm. and they really help each other. Yeah. So it's more like when they go home at night maybe where they struggle more. Because when they're at school, they're doing it at school. That was my worry and that was yeah. my question of you is, yes, once they've left the school, the safety network, and their uh, friends and teachers and yes. other staff members. It could be the person, that wonderful janitor that does clean that school every For day sure. that they, they have a friendship with. When they leave that um, comfort circle and go home and maybe their parents are both out working, then what? Well, you know what? I, I want to talk about that because okay. I want to talk want about, to. we have a really, uh, really, really great national kids helpline. Wonderful. Um, I, I have these, we, uh, the Suicide Prevention Committee, we purchased uh, several thousand of these keychains oh. with the uh, Kids Helpline uh, information on them, all different colors. The Beautiful kids, colors. They love them. And basically, uh, you mm. know, there's a, the 1 800 number on there, and I like to share it with you today. It's 1 800 668 6868. Easy enough. 1 800 668 6868 for the Kids Helpline. But I also want to tell you another statistic. Statistics are showing that youth tend to like to talk 
with this. Oh, for sure. Well, you know okay. that. They live they, with their phones now. They live with their phones. So the Kids Helpline has a uh, also a web page. Oh. And it's the kidshelpphone.ca. And it's all one word. Kidshelpphone.ca, one word. You go on there on your phone or you go on there on your computer. You can talk to someone on the other end. You don't have to say who you are. You There is a huge amount of really nice uh, handouts and sheets nice. of tackling all kinds of issues that you have what around grief around friendships, around families, all mm -hmm. that stuff. And you can go on there and spend a lot of time on there and 80% are utilizing that. Oh, that's More amazing. than the phone call. How fantastic. So Is this something new that's been in place, this last part of it, the uh, well, on the phone? It has been around for a while, this particular uh, help phone line, but about two years ago they, did a, they got a, um, a grant and they revamped it all to more towards a lot doing it through social because media. Because that's where they're because at. Because that's where they're at. So it's excellent. I've been on it a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I've given youth this number. I give them these keychains. Uh, they really utilize it and like it. And what are the brochures that just, I don't know if we, how much time we have to go through all of them. What are some yes. of the key ones? This here one is uh, called the Helping Tree and this is a program called The Link. This, uh, the Suicide Prevention Committee, every two years we upgrade right this. Up. Yeah. Okay. We'll put right French up. and English. You can go with English and then we have a French version. All right. That's perfect. When you open them up, it has all the numbers in all the different areas that uh, people can reach out. Oh, my. In wow. our region. That's incredible. That's incredible. So we did them in French and English because it was... We didn't have enough to make them bilingual because there's just too much information on them. All so they're both resources. available. You can get them in the schools in the guidance area, and you can get them at Addictions and Mental Health Services. Mm -hmm. We carry them around with us, uh, the school social workers. So just for example, just because people can't see the fine print right. on, the, on the TV, Region 7 Hospital, 623-3000. Um, there is the Miramichi City Police, RCMP, of course, uh, 911, if ever needed. Right. Um, you don't do that too randomly. Uh, domestic violence outreach service. I mean, this is incredible. There must be how many? There's oh. upward of what? Over 50? Yes, for sure. Oh, like there's 100? probably over 150. Over 100. Yeah. There's even transgender crisis hotline. Wow. Well, we uh, we wanted to. That used to be under the category of health, and we're yes. like, well, just because uh, transgender doesn't mean you have a health issue. Exactly. So we made a category specifically for them. So incredible. we tried to make it very sensitive to and, all populations. And important, very important to this. This show is addictions and mental health is seven seven eight six one one one, and that's our local mental health services number. But this is an amazing brochure containing a lot of very valuable information and resources. Another thing I want to mention with that is if you find there's some signs that your your young person in your house may need some extra help, um, you know, one of the things you would do is if you think that they're uh, going to harm themselves, or they say they're going to harm themselves or someone else, mm -hmm. uh, always call nine one one. Yeah. Always present to the ER, uh, mm -hmm. your local ER. But I wrote down some signs that might be helpful for people if they're noticing this happening to okay, their school age children. Uh, symptoms of chronic depression, uh, sleeping difficulties, mm -hmm. restlessness, low self-esteem. Uh, there's some academic changes and struggles going on to school suddenly. Uh, there's an indifference to school related activities. Suddenly they don't want to be part of the school. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, deterioration of relationships with family and friends. Yes. And it's usually quite noticeable. Uh, Risk-taking behavior, mm -hmm. drug, alcohol use, um, fighting, stuff like that. Just abnormal. The things that aren't usual to their character. Unusual to their character. They're taking right, risks. Right. They're driving really fast. Right, they right, right. Coming in late at night and not being able to refuse, refused, that kind of thing. Right. So you're kind of like, that's risky. Mm. Uh, denying pain, uh, you know, denying that uh, they're feeling any pain. They're really strong. I'm very mature, but it seems out of character. Those are some things that you want to start exploring with your young and person. Watching for, and you've got to be really eyes on your kids at That's all right. times, especially following a, such a tragedy, whether it's this one, one in the past, or God forbid, one that's yet to come. That's Michelle, right. Michelle, um, we're going to just take a couple of uh, minutes finally and just ask us, I want to ask you yourself, who okay. has this heavy load as a clinical therapist every day of the year, how you do find time for Michelle Bushy Joe to get away from it mentally. Well, you really self-care is paramount. Uh, you, you really we preach it to our clients, and we don't always uh, we're not very good at it ourselves sometimes. Um, you really uh, things that I do personally is um, I love my dog. I love my dog too. Uh, so therapeutic. Right. They're very pet Aww. therapy, very therapeutic. Um, gym, go to the gym. Yes. Uh, try to eat well, drink lots of water. Yep. Uh, participate in things that you like to do. Fun 
things. Fun like, things. And whether it's a good book, a, a fun movie, a dance group, yoga. Uh, art night, an art night. Yes, just because you do need that. Let's face it, that. people, I worry, sometimes my husband too, I'll say, what do you do for you? So we'll take a nice little trip and escape it all, or we'll go out to dinner, or just watch a fun movie or something yes. like that. I try to get away a couple of times a year as well, just on vacation to clear my mind. So are you doing okay? Because this was an unusual case. This, yes. We didn't lose just one life, which is which is tragic. Yes. We lost four young people at one time. So are you, I'm going to ask you, as a therapist, are you holding up the best you can? Yes, I have a lot of support. I have a husband who's very supportive. I have a family, a mom and a dad, and brothers and sisters are very supportive. And I got a lot of great friends. A lot of friends. And our team. Our team at work, we have been really taking care of each mm -hmm. other. And, um, and our directors and our managers are making sure that we're being taken care of. So. Well, look, Michelle, I can't thank you enough for being our guest because people needed you at this time. We You're needed welcome. you um, to give us support. And I hope you'll come back another time and oh, share more it. information because there's so much of it. I wish you a, a really good week ahead with some sunshine. Thank and you. thank you for being our guest. You're very welcome. And I just wanted to do a quick segue to our next guest is that he's going to talk about music. Yes, Darren and McCormick is on board. That's right. And we want to say that's a way of self-care. That's right. So music plays a big therapeutic role. So thank just, you very much, Michelle. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Have a Chat. We are here with another very special guest now. Darren McCormick is joining me. I am the uh, solo host today. My name is Judy Loger, if anybody missed us earlier. Uh, but I'm so happy that you are coming on to talk about something upbeat and pleasant. Well, thank you for having me. I and appreciate foremost, it. you're a mere machine, so yeah. kudos to that. Cheers. Darren, <laughs> uh, again, you've been on our show before. You're always a welcome back guest. We look forward to each and every visit you make. Tell us about who Darren McCormick is, if somebody's missed our show. Yeah, well, you know, I'm from Miramichi, and uh, I guess what gets me into these things is, like, I travel around, and uh, probably like you, when you... When you're in a different community somewhere else other than Miramichi, mm -hmm. you see something you like, you want to bring it home. Oh, yes. And that's what happens to me. I kind of get carried away. I see something <laughs> I like, and I said, that's it. I'm bringing, bringing it home. Are you every... talking about music now? Yeah, or just all music, kinds of things? Yeah, everything, really. But uh, for, okay. in this instance, it's music, you know. And yeah. I, I'm, instead of me driving to Halifax uh, to see Steve Poltz, Right. I would rather bring him here and share him with the community. That's a perfect idea. Yeah. I think you're a really big fan of his because right off the top, you're going to talk about Steve Poltz a little bit yeah. and your connection to Steve Poltz, the musician. Yeah, well, the first time I saw him was about 10 years ago at the Carleton uh, Music and Grill in, in, um, in Halifax. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I was just blown away. I just took a chance. I saw the poster, didn't recognize the name. Like a lot of people say, Poltz, what is that? Right. And uh, so I decided to go in for supper and uh, stay for the show, mm -hmm. and I was blown away. And like, uh, and literally, it's changed my life. Ten because years ago? <laughs> ten years ago is the first time I seen him and met him. Mm -hmm. And then so I followed up, and I went and seen him a few more times. Yes. And then I decided, that's it. i got to bring him home. So uh, Well, on that note, you have a very close connection and are very much a part of our Vogue Theatre in uh, Miramichi East, which yeah. Victor Summers has taken over and done a tremendous job on. Yes, uh, Before we talk about what actually happens uh, under that roof, because there are so many amazing events each week, um, talk about the, the, the new uh, Vogue. Can we talk about that for yeah, a minute? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was there this weekend. And this coming Saturday, they're having an event there for uh, a, uh, 80s music night. Oh. And it's going to be the grand reopening. And oh. if anybody's been there before, you know, uh, the washrooms in the lobby hasn't been updated since no. the 1950s. The 50s. So now it's all new it's all modern the ladies washrooms is mirrors and lights and how uh, lovely is yeah, that yeah yeah put a lot of heart yeah. and soul into that yeah incredible really it really, to really is incredible summers, yeah. what he's done there yeah. beautiful um i unfortunately can't get there this weekend because i'm hosting the uh, diva diamond dinner which is the eighth annual on the river yes. and it's basically uh there are still some tickets i think left at town hill jewelry on the square in newcastle there are a few if you run and get them uh, with Lisa Mitchell, but uh, yeah, the, the, it usually sells out, 
and we have a grand time. Yeah. And we do a few little highlights that pertain to the 70s and 80s and 90s and a yeah. few uh, <laughs> little surprises there. But So I wish I could be at both, but I can't. So tell me about your time and schedule for well, the, the 80s night. Uh, the 80s night, doors open. It's uh, tickets at the door. So okay. you just show up at the door. And like I say, it's going to be the grand reopening. So it's kind of like a, a Miramichi collective of, of musicians that oh. are doing all 80s music. That wicked. And uh, there's no advanced tickets. It's just show up, uh, music at the door, and the money goes all towards the Vogue. How for that much show. are the tickets? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. And yeah. it all goes to keeping the restoration going for the Vogue theater. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And they have a bar there for that evening as well. Is that a surprise too? Or do you have some of the guests that are going to be taking on, for example, uh, I don't know, from the 80s? <laughs> Who do we have? John Bon Jovi? <laughs> My little heartthrob, John yeah, Bon Jovi? probably some, uh, all of that, and uh, Cindy Lauper, probably. Yes, but you do. <laughs> I'm just guessing. No, I'm just guessing, yeah. too. But these are women that can actually, it's not just for fun. They can actually sing, right? These are actual oh, the, performers. The, these, uh, the, it's a Miramichi musicians uh, yes. covering 80s music, right and on. it's going to be phenomenal. Because yeah. I know a few, but I don't know that many. Yeah. So you don't want to tell <laughs> me. You want it to be a surprise. It's a surprise, yeah. All right. So I know that Steve Poltz is uh, from the States, is he not? He was born in Halifax. Oh. Raised in California. Right. And recently he moved to Nashville. So if you know Nashville is the center of the universe when it comes to music. <laughs> so I knew that move was going to be a big move for him. So yeah. he's got a big name producer. His album was just released in March. And now uh, Miramichi is the first stop on his East Coast uh, leg of his tour. Does he love it here? Yeah, yeah, it's growing on him for sure. I mean, we're yeah. a small city, but yeah. we pack it in with a lot of hospitality. Oh, do we ever? Don't yeah. we? My yeah. thoughts go to him um, with his collaboration with Jewel. Yeah. The, the very famous singer, um, You Were Meant For Me. He worked on that song with her, did That's he not? Right. And that made them, he was pretty well known from that. That song was the second longest running song on Billboard of all time. I love it. And, uh, you know, they woke up on a beach in Mexico. Oh, after, they were a couple. They were a couple, oh, yeah. And he wow. wrote that song for his girlfriend. You and there's a whole me. story behind that. And it's, it's quite a story, That's really. That's beautiful. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah. It, She's great. So now you have obviously formed more than just a, hey, come to Miramichi, we're going to put you into a, a Vogue, um, you know, venue and let you perform. Yeah. You must have a friendship with him. Yeah, well, it's, this is his third visit to Miramichi. I know. And uh, last year I was in Halifax at a show in Halifax and I took my cousin Joyce out to see him. Mm -hmm. And she asked the same question. She, and she says, I know you know him, Darren, but do you think he knows, he remembers your name? I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. And, and just moments after she said that, he's playing a song and he says, Darren, stand up. Yeah. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Darren McCormick. Well, and he mentioned my mother and my kids and my wife. And he goes, I come to Miramichi. He takes me sailing That's and we eat lobster so and salmon. Ooh. So then he introduces me to the crowd. And I said, oh, thank you. And I sit down. And I said to Joyce, yeah, I think he remembers. Good thing he didn't say, hey, Ralph, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's really, so what kind of a guy is he? Like, what do you find um, he's, like, he's good with you and open with you yeah. and, and warm with you. But uh, in the audience, does he have a good rapport with people oh, after the show? In, in, like, incredible. Like, he's an in, in, incredibly talented musician. Like, like tell classically, me about it, I don't know much about him. Uh, classically trained guitar player. Oh. But he, he's, he's funny. He could have been a comedian okay. if he wanted to be. And he, he injects his, uh, his music with stories, yeah. and uh, he talks about, he talks about trick-or-treating at Liberace's house, and Elvis Presley hugging his sister. What? And, and, these uh, are true stories? And he was an altar boy. With, uh, Bob Hope went to his church. You're and, kidding. And Those these are, are all, huge stories. These are huge stories, yeah. And the, the life he's lived, and he travels the world, and he, and he, and he comes here and tells us these stories, and they're you just know, incredible. Who does that is Jan Arden. Yeah. She, I've met, I've met her and actually talked to her for a while one time, and she's just as down to earth as he seems to be. And with her new show, of course, that's a hit. And mm. she's also in her music um, when she's, for example, at the casino in Moncton. She throws a lot of humor into her act, and and yeah. she's so funny. And doesn't that add to the whole overall picture of entertainment? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, you feel like you've become part of it. And yes. Yeah. So have you been getting good crowds at the show? Do we have to promote this big time or are people yeah. waiting for him? Yeah, well, you know, we definitely have to promote it. That's why mm -hmm. we're here. We mm -hmm. like to promote this show and we like people to show up. And kind of like me yes. that first time, sometimes you read the name Steve Poltz. Well, who's that? Mm -hmm. And you got to take a chance. And I'm telling you, like, simply he's probably, he's the best entertainer that I know out there. Best well, performer, entertainer. Quite a compliment. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you. I read a piece that was published in the United States, uh, in the United Press. And it says uh, he's a mix between Iggy Pop and uh, Robin Williams on stage. <laughs> Iggy Pop and Robin Williams. Yeah. That's quite the comparison, yeah. isn't it? And uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's just him and his acoustic guitar, but he can captivate uh, an audience for hours on, on, on end. So he's coming from Nashville. 
Yep. That's where he's living and, and yeah. okay. And this is his third visit. Third and do you have to entertain him when he's here? Are you the are you the go-to guy that says let's go into about <laughs> yeah, bands okay. and have a couple of burgers? I got or? a boat in front of the rod. We're getting on the boat now, and then we take him out for supper. And then uh, after we're done here, he'll be in Miramichi for two nights. Coming the night before, yeah. and uh, so we'll do a bit of publicity and have some fun the day before. So much and fun. And then uh, I'm going to hit the road with him. Actually, I'm going to Fredericton the, the following night on Ooh. Wednesday, the 15th. He's in Dolan's Pub. And then we're off to the Carlton in, in Halifax for three sold out shows in Halifax. You're his social agent, basically. Well, for, for, that, for that week. <laughs> yes, for that week. <laughs> yeah. Darren, growing up, did you yourself, like I know how much you want to bring these people and share these musicians with our community, but did you have a love for music growing up or any musical inclination yourself? Yeah, I always loved music. You know, we used to have lip sync contests for my, uh, or, or uh, concerts for my parents when my parents would have friends over and my, my friends and I, we would put on a show for them, but uh, unfortunately, I never learned how to play any instruments other than the spoons. I can play the spoons. Dry and, guitar. Yeah, and I can get, get me into a party sometimes. And <laughs> yes, but with Victor, have you worked closely? Is that what, I mean, I know you sought out these people and thought what a great idea it would be to bring them here, but then you had to go to Victor and say, you know, you have to line all these shows up, right? So that's yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, their calendar, the the theater's calendar, and uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of work, but it's kind of fun too. I like uh, I like to see the nuts and bolts of it and how mm -hmm. it all comes together, and the anticipation of it. Like uh, we plan on this throughout the winter, and it kind of gets you through that slow winter oh, process. Oh, we've had a long. It gives you something winter. to look forward to, and now the snow is gone, and mm -hmm. the spring is here. And, it uh, better be, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. Put yeah. my winter clothes away. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, what other shows have like really? When I drive by the Vogue Theater, uh, which is on Canard Street, correct? Yeah. In Chatham, in Miramichi East. Fifty Canard. I can't believe every week or so that the signs change from comedy to uh, yeah. this type of a musician playing to a dinner theater type thing. Uh, it's been incredible. Yeah. What the, that what the Vogue has brought and opened up to us again. Yeah. Well, like Victor and his team, they've really injected a lot of life in, into Chatham really Certainly you know have. they got the creative grounds coffee shop across the street and the Vogue like you say there's something happening all the time oh, I know it's on that corner to a really really yeah. busy corner yeah it's great when you see the sign all lit up and mm -hmm. people lined up outside and uh, now, people come in and have a great time what do your kids think of this type of music I mean I'm a different generation than you are and my kids are, of course are, are you know they're thinking when I play certain music mom where are you coming from they can't believe I know people such as, uh, let's see, Led Zeppelin. You know who Led Zeppelin is. It's like, yes, yeah. I grew up with that. Yeah. But that's what they're listening to now. They're yeah. going back from a lot of, a lot of them are into the R&B and a lot of them into um, rapping and all that. But, but they're surprised to think that their parents are into some of the older stuff like yeah. Elvis. And, and I still love Elvis. Yeah. Well, my kids hear music all the time at home. I'm playing it, and uh, I involve them in this as That's well. That's what like, I want to know. They're in grade 9 and 10, and uh, so they see the thought process and how it comes together. It's an idea. It's a love of the music, and yes. then I reach out, and then we make it happen. And then uh, when you come to the theater the nights that I do shows, it'll be my kids collecting tickets at the doors and holding the doors open for people. And so they see the whole process. That's so then, really important And then they know. get to meet the, meet the entertainers. And, yeah, you're yeah. working them into the whole scheme of things. You're yeah. letting them be part of the picture, yeah. and they're volunteering as well, which is what yeah. we're best known for in Miramichi, yeah, our exactly. volunteerism and our hospitality, second to none, really. Exactly. When we yeah. put on a show, we put on a show. <laughs> And what else can you tell us? Will there be beverages served that night? Like, will there be yeah. a bar? Yeah, and we have some. And we couldn't do any of this without the people that help us do it, mm. like our sponsors. So, mm -hmm. Gig and Groove is uh, one of our main sponsors. Win, and uh, you know he's going to pay me a thousand dollars to wear this shirt on TV what? today. No, no Gig and joking. Groove. Gig and Groove. <laughs> when they they run That's... a little uh, gift shop right around the corner here on Sweeney Lane. Where, where you have buy. I been? Yeah, so they help promote the music. They sell used vinyl, and his wife makes jewelry. I did you not check know that, out. that. So just yeah. briefly touch on it again. So it's in Newcastle. Yeah, Sweeney Lane. Sweeney Lane. And they have seven studios. And uh, that's the name of the studio, and it's a gift shop. His wife uh, does handmade clothing and oh, jewelry. I'll be right over there after and, the show. Uh, used vinyl and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, I have not heard so, of that. So, and he has a website, and he, he he's constantly pumping out this event and every other event that happens happens around. So, yeah, he's a big help. And of course, you ever hear of uh, Patty Quinn? You ever hear oh, that fellow? Oh, yeah. are you being funny? <laughs> yeah. So, Actually, so Patty, Patty Quinn's uh, and, a huge personality yeah. in Miramichi, yeah. and I think he's known 
you know, not just here, but well beyond uh, the provinces even. Yeah, exactly. So the, the Sun, 95.9 The Sun, the, they're also a big help. And of course, uh, the Rod. The Rod is a big help. They run the bar the night of the show. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and then Steve will be staying at the at the hotel, and they put him up room with a view. Oh, they're great down there. Yeah. I have to yeah. say, I can't say enough about Jim Gertridge, the manager. So it's 19 and over, basically. Uh, yeah, actually, no, you, you can be underage, you but there is a bar. It's, it's the same kind of a liquor license as a wedding, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you can have children there. And this so and do you that. think, Darren, and don't laugh, do you think I'd have to be ID'd if I went in? You probably would. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll be sure to have my license pulled out there in case I go. <laughs> exactly. I wish I could go. It's the same night as my event. But I'm sure with well, this... Well, no, this is the Tuesday, May 14th. Oh, this is May 14th. The May 14th. Then so it's two, week, two weeks for tomorrow. Okay. And we'd love to see you there. All right, yeah, yeah. and maybe I can. So go over the details again. So it's so like the Tuesday, Vogue Theater. So Tuesday, May 14th yep. at the Vogue Theater. Mm -hmm. The tickets right now are 25 bucks, but if you wait and there's still tickets, they'll be $30 at the door. At the door, so you better yep. get them now. Yeah, so you can get them on eventbrite.ca or you can get them at the coffee shop at Creative Ground. So we'd love to see as many people as possible there. Creative Ground. And I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> so give me an example of what type of music he sings, so I'd be intrigued to go, because I am yeah. intrigued, but well, I don't I know can, what I type I can tell of... you some stuff that you would have heard before. You ever see that movie Notting Hill? Yes. Uh, the main love song there, it's called Everything About You. Everything About You. Uh, and it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Slow. He, it's and a slow romantic. love song. And uh, that's oh. on the soundtrack, and that's one of his songs. And I want to mar mark that down. I was con confused that it was May 4th, but that's the night for the 80s celebration. That's the grand celebration. opening. That's the yeah. grand opening. It's May 4th at the Vogue. And this one's May 14th. May 14th. And the doors open again at what time? At uh, the doors open at seven thirty. Show starts at eight. And usually, what it gives about a two hour performance. Yeah, there's going to be an intermission in the beginning. So come in, uh, you know, it's a half hour. Uh, Mingling. You grab a drink. Nice. Mingle. Get to see nice. everybody. He'll have some shirts and some CDs. Yep. And actually, his new album's out on vinyl as well. And the album is uh, yellow vinyl, very unique, and it's pretty sharp. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really, really nice. Yeah. And the and the audience is getting to know him. They want him back again, obviously. Oh yeah, They've yeah. Like I say, him. this is his third visit. Okay, I'm so. going to try to go. I yeah. promise you, I will try and to go. And if you look at his uh, at his website. You'll see all through Nova Scotia, his shows are sold out. Oh, right, and he's just kind of breaking ground in New Brunswick. Right. So it's it's uh, his only New Brunswick show is uh, mm. Miramichi, and then the following night in Fredericton. So we'd like to you know get some crowds out to those, and then maybe he'll do more and more shows, and more cities. And this is largely thanks to you, Darren, because you've put a lot of heart and soul into this. You can't it just it doesn't just happen. When no. I do things, I have to put a lot of heart and soul into it to make it a success yeah. as well. And he can be very grateful to the promotion that you're giving him backstage. He's not a bad-looking guy either. Pretty <laughs> handsome dude. Yeah, all the ladies like him. Yeah, yeah, he's a sweetheart. <laughs> Quite the suit he's got on there, too. Yeah. But I think you're going to put bums in that seat that night. In fact, let's hope that we fill the Vogue Theater. Let's do it. Well, We've yeah. done it before. We filled it for Matt Mays in February, so we can do it again for Steve Poltz in May. And you're very enthusiastic. And bring the kids and get them volunteering. I like your idea of, of getting all the families involved. Um, anything else you want to tell us about anything? Well, thank you very much and go support the Vogue, you know what I mean? And if you see a live event and you don't recognize the name, take a chance and that's how you know. Like, how are you going to be uh, introduced to new music and new experiences if you don't take a chance? So. I know. <laughs> and we see comedy signs up there and, and, and each to their own. They have to try it once. If they don't like it, they don't have to go back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But obviously he's going to be a hit. He's going to be a hit. Yeah. So I'm going to mark that in my schedule. Let the viewers do that too. I want to thank Darren McCormick very, very much for coming back and sharing all the information and the Steve Holtz concert is May 14th at the Vogue Theatre in Chatham. Be there or be square. So Thank thanks you, Judy. again, Darren. Thank you. Okay, that you have a fun. great week ahead. Excellent. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Thank you. And have a little drink.